Hi, and welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video, we'll be covering the most important feature introduced in Bluetooth 5.1, direction finding using angle of arrival and angle of departure. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include direction finding, real-time locating systems or RTLS, then we'll cover the angle of arrival and angle of departure in a bit more depth. Let's first start by talking about the new direction finding feature in Bluetooth 5.1. There are two main types of Bluetooth low energy applications that can utilize this new feature. First, we have proximity solutions. Proximity solutions leverage BLE to determine the proximity between two BLE devices, how near they are to each other via receive signal strength information. For example, tags attached to a fixed object to display relevant information to a user near the object, such as in retail marketing and museums. Second, we have position systems, such as real-time locating services, RTLS, understanding where devices are located within a space, usually indoors, where GPS does not work very accurately. Examples include asset tracking, user tracking, and wayfinding solutions. Now before version 5.1, the specification did not define a way to determine direction information. We also relied solely on RSSI, or received signal strength information, to determine proximity between two BLE devices. The accuracy was also not so great and usually limited to meter level accuracy. Starting with version 5.1, an optional feature allowing the detection of signal direction was introduced. To achieve this, it utilizes one of two new methods, angle of arrival at the receiver end and angle of departure at the transmitter end. For positioning systems, this helps achieve centimeter level accuracy. And for proximity solutions, it enables detection of the direction of the Bluetooth signal. The use of angle of arrival versus angle of departure depends on the limitations of the system as well as the type of application. You can think of the following as a rule of thumb. Angle of arrival is used when you have fixed receivers that need to track other moving devices, such as in a hospital where we need to track where different health devices and equipment are located within the building. Angle of departure, on the other hand, is used in cases where devices need to track their own positions within the system, such as in an application where the user is finding their way navigating an indoor mall using their smartphone. Now in real-time locating systems, or RTLS, there are two methods used to determine location. The first is called trilateration. Trilateration uses time of flight to determine distances from at least three transmitters at known locations to the track device. These calculated distances are then translated into location coordinates for the track device. The second method used is triangulation. Triangulation uses angles of signals sent or received by devices in fixed locations to determine the location of the device being tracked. Keep in mind that both methods could also be combined to increase the location accuracy. As we mentioned earlier, Bluetooth 5.1 introduces two methods for use in Bluetooth systems, the angle of departure and angle of arrival. Combining these methods with RSSI can then estimate location and distance to a track device. Now let's talk about each of these methods in a bit more detail. Angle of arrival is usually used in a system that comprises of the following. A moving transmitter device that we need to track, the transmitter device will use a single antenna to transmit the signals, whether it's advertising packets or data packets during a connection. The receiver, on the other hand, is usually equipped with an array of multiple antennas. Using these antennas, the receiver is able to estimate the angle of arrival of the signal being transmitted by the moving device. Here's an example of a system can, that can utilize angle of arrival to determine location. In this example, the beacon is a moving device that continuously transmits advertising packets. The receiver, which is usually fixed, uses its multiple antennas to estimate the angle of arrival of the signals transmitted from the beacon. So how is the angle of arrival estimated or calculated? Well, without getting into too much details, the received signal will have a different phase when arriving at each of the antennas of the receiver. Based on that difference between the phases of the received signal at each of the antennas, and since the distance between the antennas is fixed and known to the receiver, it can estimate the direction of the moving device. The details of this can get quite lengthy and probably deserves a whole video on its own, so we won't cover it here. 
In the case of angle of departure, it is similar to the angle of arrival, but the roles are reversed. Here, the transmitter is the device that's equipped with multiple antennas, and the receiver has only one single antenna. In the case of the transmitter, it will perform an operation called antenna switching. The basic concept behind antenna switching is to use a single antenna at a time to transmit the signal. After that, the transmitter switches to using the next antenna in the array, and so on. At the receiver end, it samples the data being sent by the transmitter. Now knowing the description and details of the antenna array is needed at the receiving end, and methods for transferring this information is defined via Bluetooth profiles, which have not yet been defined as of the recording of this video. It then uses all the information to calculate the angle of arrival and hence the direction of the transmitter. As we mentioned before, the angle of departure is primarily used for indoor positioning systems. For example, in this case, a transmitter could be a fixed locator device that sends a signal which gets received by a smartphone. The smartphone could then tell the direction of the received signal from the angle of departure data and translate that to a location on a map displayed in a specific smartphone app. To learn more about Elasis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elasis.com. Have a need for training or design services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about VLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.